Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video showing you how to install the Tabletop Simulator game, which is essentially what it sounds like, a virtual way you can play board games and other sorts of tabletop games as best as possible in a digital virtual setting on a computer or device. So uh, it's hosted by something called Steam, which is a video game library that is, fr is free and you kind of pay for the games inside Steam. Without further ado, let's begin. So I'm going to go into my internet browser, whichever one you choose, and I'm just going to search for Steam. So Steam, I'll say welcome to Steam, click in here, and I'm going to create a, um, going to create a new account because the person I'm doing this for does not have an account. So first you would start by installing I actually already have it installed, but you click install, install Steam, choose where to save your file. I'm going to choose downloads because why not? And I would save it to right there. It's going to download. From here, I would click show in folder. There it is. I would click here. Yes, you want to allow changes. You're going to read through the disclaimer. Standard stuff for installing. You choose next, your language, next, choose where to install it, etc., etc. Okay? Now, so I've ne uh, pretended as though I've never used Steam before, so first you want to create an account. So you're obviously going to put in your email address, which I've hidden, choose your country, ch cl click I'm not a robot. Uh, it might come up with some pictures and it'll make you choose them. If you don't pass it the first time, that's fine. Try a few more times and it might work. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the thing they're asking you to click for images containing are actually in the image or not. Um, you can read this if you want or not. Up to you. Um, clues to checkbox to agree and say that you, yes, you are 13. You can click continue. And... So I've done a few steps. I've installed. Um, I chose the username, created a username. Once I've verified the email address, first you need to go into your email address and it'll tell you some way to verify your email address. So um, that will be a link that you'll probably click and then it should let you in. You create your own username, you can make it up and then create a password, which I've done. And then you just wanna log into it. So uh, yeah, you use your stuff and that's it click login and then it's going to launch and it'll give you all these ads for the games you want but that's fine you probably don't um, necessarily want to use them all so that's kind of it so then um, you could go in here and you would search the library you click library and it'll let you search table tops tabletop simulator you see if you half type it it'll suggest it down here click it you could click borrow so you could borrow it from another account so this is saying that um, you could borrow from the library of another username now this is my username because um, the, the my computer knows that I've also logged into this account on this so it automatically knows even though we're not friends although there is a list of friends um, this user doesn't have any yet but I would be able to share it so basically this means if one person has paid for it and you're friends with that other person on your account you can share it. So they'll still only allow one person to use it simultaneously, but technically if you had a spouse or someone you're living with or a friend or anyone really <laughs> that you wanted to share it with, you could. So basically the rule would be there can only be one person using that Steam program at a time. So if I have a bunch of games and I'm playing another game and I wanted to share Tabletop Simulator, they would not be able to use Tabletop Simulator even if I was using a different game in Steam. Basically, if my Steam account's not being used, I can share this game with someone else. Um, I believe that's how that works. So that's one way you can find out if anyone else of your friends has it by searching in your library, but I actually want to go to the store. So again, I've already typed it into the store, and here it is. So you just click here. You could choose the four pack or you could do the one pack. Again, you can see that they save a little bit of money to get the four pack, but then you'd have to either eat the cost yourself or expect four other people to pay you back for it later. Um, and then you can use it, do it as a gift. So you'd add to the cart 
and it'll go here and you could choose to purchase that a gift for someone else or myself now if you purchase this as a gift um, Steam sort of has its own built-in mechanism for how you can share it with someone else. You can share it within Steam, send it as an email, and then they just have to use Steam to open it up. Um, so those are a couple of different options. In this case, I want to purchase it for myself. So you can choose how you want to do it. And you could, again, you should be able to figure it out. Like if your visa, you put this all in. Uh, this disclaimer, this is a secure system. This is used by millions of people around the world. Um, I would always recommend from experts in banking and f former uh, former scam artists or former th digital thieves uh, have all said that a credit card is also always more secure than a debit card. Um, they have more policies in place to reimburse if any uh, fraudulent activity happens. So anyway, you can uh, input your information there. I'm sure you guys can all figure that out. Um, you can choose whether to save it or not. Uh, not necessary. It's, it's really up to you. Continue and move forward with it. And once you pay for it, it should show up in your library. So in this list in the library. Now the reason it's showing these games is because I, on my other account, do have these already. And so if I click it again, it'll, it'll allow me to play it or it'll allow me to um, borrow it. So in this game, it doesn't give a borrow option because I have it already. Uh, sorry, because it's a free game, whereas these ones cost money, so I could borrow it from my other username, again, like we discussed with this. But in this case, it should show up here, but then you'll still have to download it. So I'll actually show you kind of how that works now. So I'm now logging into my other account. If I can get the password right. So now I'm back in sort of my main account. Um, because I've already purchased the four pack, I'm going to show you how you can send it as a gift to the others. So what happens is when you go and buy it, which I did um, for myself in my regular account, if I go in here um, in this little envelope button, it should show me the gifts I have available. Um, it might show up like this, and you just need to find the tabletop simulator one. So I have a gift to give to someone, so I'm going to do that. So I'll click this, and I'll click send gift send the gift. Now again, you could choose the email address, which may be easier for some of you than others, I don't know. Or you can send it directly through Steam. So what I'm going to do is send it through Steam because I don't have access to the email address I'm sending it to. And it gives me a list of friends. Now what you're going to want to do is set up this person as a friend. So I will first go in to do that. I'll add a friend. Um, you probably want to search by their name. You could send their code or do a link, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the username of the other person I want to give it to. And apparently that's not a username. Maybe I've done it wrong. So I forgot I didn't actually set it up. So what you first want to do is you come in here when you Go back into your home screen. I think it loads your library. You want to come up to the top right, view my profile, and you need to set up the same profile because we haven't done this yet because you're new. Setup. I'm going to do this sort of info, fill this stuff out. So you can fill out the real name, information, and whatever, and your username, um, which I've done. You could choose a picture if you want, or these. These are all optional. I'm not going to bother with them. So I'll save my changes and then. Um, I'm going to want to go add a friend. I can do it. Oh, interesting. So this is a limitation of Steam that I didn't know about. You cannot actually add friends unless you spent five US dollars on a game beforehand. So you can do that if you want by buying the game. That won't be a problem. In my case, um, I can probably get around it the other way by sharing it in email. So that's what I'm going to don't care about this ad. This is where I enter the email address. So I've typed in my little gift message and I click send. I've sent the gift. And this will change. So here it is. So what I've done is um, I shared it by email, and then 
you open up the email. Um, I uh, I was able to get it sort of in here, and I just had to click yes, I have Steam. You could choose no, I do not have Steam, and it'll show you how to download it. I guess I chose yes, I have Steam, and then it kind of linked it to the Steam program, which opened up, and it popped up with this: you've received a gift. And then I sort of set it here, so I'll accept the gift and add it to my library. And you can close the window. Now I go to library, and look, it's right here. I can click play. Now you'll probably have to install it. The reason it's giving me play right away is because I already have it installed on my computer because I've used it on my account. But here it is. You should be able to launch it. You click play. Yep. Uh, it'll give you three options. You're just going to want to choose the first one, play tabletop simulator. These are kind of other technical things that you don't need to worry about. You just click play. It'll give the end user license agreement. Again, all the legal contract type stuff. Um, just do standard type things for video games. Click play. So now it's going to be, it's going to run. It's going to launch in a new program in a new window, which you'll see here shortly once it runs. So there it is. I can see it's opening. And here it is, kind of rolling. Don't worry about this. You won't see this. That doesn't matter. It's because of another program I have on my computer. And here you go. So if you wanted to join a game that a friend has hosted, you just click join right here. Click it. And then one thing you would want to do potentially is you'd want to choose friends only and this will show ones that your friends on Steam will have. Now, my understanding is you can't add friends before you spend five US dollars. However, maybe now that I got a gift for something that costs more than five US dollars, it might let me. So I'm gonna try that again and see what happens. No, I still can't. So you cannot add friends unless you've spent five US dollars on a game. So I don't know what that is, Canadian, maybe eight. Um, but in this case, I'll just uncheck it. It should show me a whole bunch of games. So it'll tell you the name of the game. So here's the name of the game. Say we want to do something simple like Jigsaw. I could try and join it. I click connect. Now usually they add a password. I don't know the password, so I'm clearly not going to be able to join that game. But that's one way you would do it. And again, you're going to want to choose this one if you have friends and can do that and do that. Otherwise, you should be able to search the name of the game, like the server name. Um, just be wary. There might be a lot of swearing or random other words because people on the internet are terrible. Um, and you can search in whatever you want and it should be able to find your game. Name it something unique. Don't name it just the name of the game because there might be many of them, right? Like if I type in Euchre, if you saw there was one example of it there, like I guess it shows by game too, so maybe that could work. Anyway, you want to make sure you find the one hosted by your friend and you make sure you've told each other the passwords. So that's how you can do that. Now if you want to create one, you just come in here. You probably want to play one with friends, so you click multiplayer, server name, you can make it up. You could call it, well look, I've called it Crocoma. You could call it, um, I don't know, um, OCSCC, I don't remember what it's called. Oshawa Sen Citizen Senior, I don't remember. OSCSCC. Ottawa, Oshawa Senior Citizen Service Center. There we go. I think that's the acronym. <laughs> um, and then you could just type in the password wherever you want it to be. You could make it like a, I don't know, Euchre 1 and choose your number of players. Again, I don't know Euchre. I think maybe it only hits four players, maybe. But you create the server. And anyone else should be able to type OCSC um, or whatever that name I chose was and then as long as they have the password it lasts them for the password and they join just like I previously showed you. Now what you're going to want to do probably is you, I don't think you would want to use cards um, then it just takes more work to set it up. You are going to want to choose workshop and you can go into the workshop. Now these are all in here because I've already gone and done it um, on this computer before and, it, and, my, and the game uh, Steam or this game in Steam tabletop knows I've already added all these games but they won't be in yours. So if I want to find a new one, this only searches the list you have. You want a new one, you click browse. Now this is going to open the internet and it'll show the website you're using. Uh, sorry, it'll show the website for the game. And this is the workshop. So that's these are basically games that can be created by individual users. So in my case, if I want Euchre, I'm going to search Euchre. And I hit enter to do the search or you can click that button to do the search as well. Uh, 
and then you can look at a list of games. Now what I'm going to want to do is sort by most popular, because usually, not always, usually the most popular are probably the well, m most well designed. Because they can be customly made, some might not look as good. For example, you literally have like pictures of digital tables, and one table might be set up better than another, or some of the rules that the person, so someone had to manually go in and create all these rules in the game using what they call the engine. So the engine is like, um, you know, imagine you're in a car's workshop and you have a bunch of tools. The tools are already created by the programmers, so you don't need to know programming, and you just need to walk around the workshop and use the tools that are built into the game to create the game, and that's how a lot of people do it. You can also upload um, I images that you've taken with a camera um, from a different board game that maybe is obscure or, you know, not already in the library, or <laughs> maybe it's not licensed or something, so you just take a picture and you can do it. Um, I'm guessing that legal argument says not to do it. I'm not condoning anyone to take unlicensed pictures, but anyway, I th I think it's an option. Um, you go in here, you see the results. I've chosen most popular and I want to switch from over, apparently I can't change this to be all time. I only have one week or today. Um, in an older account, in mine, I think I could choose all time, but for some reason this is all it's allowing me. So these are the most popular ones. So I'm going to maybe just go for the top one. I think most popular means number of people who've downloaded it. Now, you may get in the case where it'll end up being a non-English version of the game, but in this case, I'm going to hope it's English. It looks English. I don't know. Can't tell till I get in, but the way to do it, it'll tell you here. It's, um, I think I've seen it written somewhere. I don't remember, but the way to add it is you click subscribe. So if I click subscribe, you need to sign in or create an account. Now, this is where it gets a little annoying. You need to create an account specifically for this website. You can use the same information as your, uh, you can use the same information as the Steam account, but you don't have to. So I'm gonna do that. So um, again, I logged into the Steam account, I was wrong. You can actually choose login uh, on the site. It'll be an option, sort of, you can't see it very well here, but there's login. Then you put in your existing username and password. It'll make you get uh, use a code, they call it two-step verification process. It'll email that code to your email address. You need to open the email address, find the code, put the code in, submit it, and then it'll let you in. So then you go here, click subscribe. Now I wonder if I go back to search the workshop again, maybe now. Ah, once you're logged in, then you can choose all time. Again, this is still the most popular one, so that's good. So I've subscribed. Now I'm gonna go back into the game, and look, it's in my library. So again, to do this, you create a game, you choose workshop, and then you should find it in here. So I'm gonna say, I wanna play Euchre. Do you want to load this? Yes, I do. I click it, and I load. So there is a tutorial for this tabletop simulator game that generally tells you how to play the game. You can run that on your own time. I think it's probably in menu configuration. No, maybe it's in menu help. And it'll show you all the shortcuts with your keyboard for how different things work. Um, I think there's also a tutorial um, where that is, I don't remember, probably out in the main menu, I think, so this will cancel my game. Um, where's the tutorial? Uh, hmm. Tutorial, there it is. So you do the tutorial, and again, it's going to tell you what to do from here. and you can run the tutorial on your own. I won't bore you guys with this. So here I am back in the Euchre game once I've done the tutorial. Um, I don't admittedly know how to play Euchre uh, yet, <laughs> but uh, you know you can take the cards out. I'm pressing the F key, or you could take them out. I think you can flip it probably by right-clicking, but that's just painful. Um, a tip is anytime you right-click it to see the options, that's the tutorial will teach you, you can just hold your mouse over each option and it'll tell you the shortcut keys that you can use to do it. So some of them don't have shortcuts. These ones, you can use Q and E. It'll rotate them as you see the card moving. Flip is just F. So F is a very good one to know because you'll need to use that a lot. And again, it's kind of like a virtual reality. Um, one thing is uh, if you click notebook at the top here, this is uh, different rules. So you probably all know the rules for Euchre, but if there were a new game you wanted to try out, in theory, the rules would be in here um, for everyone. And then in here, this on the left, you'll see is a option, um, a list of different controls. So example, if I wanted to play like one of the games I've tried to play, um, it's not great. 
because the physics now physics meaning like real life physics they're sort of a concept of physics in a virtual game world so much like the physics of the real world video games have physics built into them the physics are a little funky in this game but here i am playing crokinole for example see i've got the the regular hand set it here on the board where i want going to zoom in a bit to see better um you want to look at oh what might i want to use to play the game of crokinole oh well look this one looks like a flick oh look it is called a flick now i'm going to hold the mouse over and see that it's also going to if you it's hard to tell but if you look in the top left there before it <laughs> comes up i got to do it quickly see it comes up with f5 or f4 so these are all the shortcut keys so if you hit the f5 on your keyboard that will be a faster way and then f1 will be the grab so i would want to quickly so i'm i'm clicking holding go back and as you see on the right um, it tells you how to do this sort of and that's kind of how you can shoot now if I want to move one back I quickly either click here which is slow or I hit the F1 key and I can bring it back and now I'm not going to shoot it. oh yeah that's right I gotta remember to change back my flick tool so that's an option and there's a bunch of other options with the tools there um, so that is basically the demo uh, the one thing I will want to say is that based on um, what I have learned while doing this tutorial video I've learned that you need to spend five US dollars to be able to play with your friends um, in theory you can have random people join your games they don't need to be your friends in Steam but what I recommend is if you're going to buy the game and you've never used Steam before I would recommend just buying the game yourself and you need to spend that on your Steam account in order to activate the idea of adding friends. So what I'll demo now is how to add friends. I did not realize this is still running. Sorry about that. Um, pause. Yeah, I think it's running again. So I will just go back into Steam. Oh, I already had it open. Whoops. I opened it again. Um, you want to go into your friends. I have my friends list, but I want to click add a friend. Again, this is where you could type in someone's name and they would have to accept it. And these are kind of your options. Um, again, you have to have paid five dollars now. I don't think it'll let me add the other friend yet because they still can't add friends. But uh, oh, look, it worked. So there we go. So I can add them as a friend, but they can't go looking for friends because I've spent the money. So that's how you can do it if you use a four pack, I guess. Or maybe it's unlocked because the person's gotten a gift of a game that costs money. I don't know. I guess I'll find out. Let's find out, let's find out. Where has Steam gone? Steam is gone. I'm back into Steam. Uh, friends, add a friend. I uh, still can't add friends, but I can accept a friend request. So you'll see down here, add you to the friend list come with here and I have to say pending invites so I'll have to say yes accept so now I've accepted the friend invitation and now if I wanted to go in here um, technically I could as you remember if I go into tabletop simulator join uh, a game I check that box it says once hosted by friends and then it should show up if one of your friends is hosting a game they just need the password and there you go now you should be able that shouldn't be a problem because if you set a password and people don't know the password unless they're your friends and you've told them outside the game that shouldn't be an issue, only being able to search for your friends. But it's just a little more convenient rather than having to type and search through the list to find it. So uh, this here marks the um, this here marks the end of the tutorial, and hopefully that's been helpful. I know it got a little bit long, but uh, I hope that allows you guys all to play the game and to have fun. Again, keep in mind that option with the workshop. There's thousands of games you can play. You're not limited to just euchre. As you can see in the basic ones, instead of when you go into create game and you have the several options, there's one called um, 
I think it's general or basic or whatever the classic, I think classic, that first tool, you will see that you can have a general deck of cards. So you don't even need to set up that game if it, all it requires is a deck of cards or a pair of dice or something. Um, you can just launch it from there. So uh, I hope you enjoy and I hope that all works for you. If you have any issues, you can comment below in this video and I will try and figure them out and help you, uh, help you get the game working if you have any issues. Thanks. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.